Hello, uh, good morning, and uh, my name is Matt Baldwin, and I'm going to be doing the, today's training on Google Meet. Um, first, I'm just going to start off um, again with the um, Vice Chancellor's website, um, hilo.hawaii.edu slash uhh slash vcaa. And if you go to that website, there's a, a little banner here little blue banner. It says Distance Essentials. Um, if I click on that, it brings up uh, the trainings we have today. But there's some documents down here as well, some reference and tutorials. Um, so there is um, some training materials that, that I prepared for Google Meet there. Um, there's also a software comparison. So if, if you want to see what the difference is between Zoom and uh, Google Meet, uh, it, it will show you here. Um, we decided to offer training on Google Meet because it is very simple and very easy to use. Um, it's a little bit less of a learning curve than Zoom. And um, we found that the um, smartphone app is a little bit more user friendly than Zoom. So if you think your students might be coming in from their smartphones rather than from a, a computer, you might want to give Meet a try. There are some things that uh, Zoom has that Meet does not have, like Zoom has breakout rooms. Um, Zoom has host controls. You can mute other people's mics. Uh, there's some other things as well. But there's a list here on um, the Vice Chancellor's website, so you can compare Zoom and Meet. And if there's also links here as well. So if you need some training materials on Zoom, there's uh, materials from UH System right here. Um, under Zoom, so getting started with Zoom, recording a meeting or a lecture with Zoom. Um, but uh, I'm going to uh, step away from that and um, a new share. I'm going to share my PowerPoint here. Right, so I prepared a PowerPoint on Google Meet, and um, we will make this available as well. Um, there's not a lot of uh, text in this. Um, PowerPoint is mostly uh, just uh, you kind of click through it and it, it points to arrows for different features so you can kind of walk you through it. Um, okay, so uh, Google Meet, there's going to be a couple different ways you can join a Google Meet. Um, after we get, uh, after we get uh, done with this PowerPoint, I'm going to show you how you can schedule a Google Meet in your Google Calendar. So you can schedule it for the whole rest of the semester using Google Calendar, but it's going to generate a link that looks like this. And um, the other way to um, join Google Meet is in your Google App Switcher. So if when you're logged into your email or your calendar, you can switch into the little app, app switcher. It'll show you Google Drive, Docs, and Meet will be one of those options as well. Um, if you're logged in right now and you want to uh, follow along, um, I'll give you a moment to log into your UH account if you're not already logged in. And if, if you are logged in, you can go ahead and um, bring up a Google Meet. It'll take you to a screen and, and you'll see um, a plus sign that says um, join or create a meeting. So we're just going to create a dummy meeting for this class. So you can go ahead and do that right now. Create a dummy meeting. Give it a name. It will ask you. Um, what do you want to name it? You can just name it test or whatever you want to call it for right now. Um, I'm just going to show you some features within Google Meet so you can kind of know your way around when you're in there. Um, so once you have a Google Meet link or if you're on the Google Meet site and you click start a meeting, it will bring up this screen here, which is going to ask you for permission to use your microphone and your camera. So you want to allow that. And then it's going to bring up this screen here. So this uh, screen here is for testing. You are not actually in Google Meet yet. This is just so you can test your camera and your microphone. OK. Um, so if you see a picture of yourself, that means your webcam's working. And you'll also see down here some little green dots in the corner. And if you talk or if you tap your microphone, you'll see those dots kind of wiggle. That just means that you're getting some audio signal in. So if that uh, works, that means you're ready to join. There's the audio. Um, there's also um, a camera off and, uh, and microphone off here. So if you wanted to turn off your camera, you could do that. 
um, right there. And then if you want to uh, mute your audio, you can do that there. It's generally good etiquette to mute your audio before you go into the conference. Otherwise, if there's 20 people, everyone's mic's going to be on at the same time. It gets kind of chaotic. Um, so yeah, right here, you want to mute your audio, and then you're ready to join. So click Join right there. And then it, it will bring you into the meeting here. So right now, you should be the only person in your meeting. But I'm just going to walk you through the features. You don't need someone else there to kind of play around with some of the different features. OK, so you have the name of the meeting right here in the corner. If you click on that, it brings up the link. If you need to copy and paste that link and put it in the email to someone in case they forgot it. Um, here the, you have your, your mute camera. Mute your camera and mute your microphone again. And in the middle, you have um, the hang up icon, which looks like a red telephone uh, receiver. Um, okay, so then in the center here we had the uh, the telephone icon to hang up, and then there's also captions, and I'll show more about captions later. Um, but Google Meet does have automatic captions. Okay. Um, next, we're going to show you to how to get into the settings pane. So if you click on the the three dots over in the lower right corner, and then click on settings, it will bring up this window here. Um, the first choices it gives you is audio for microphone and speakers. So if you had, um, if you have a, a laptop computer, it might have a built-in microphone, but maybe you have a headset that you want to use. Maybe you have a Bluetooth you want to use. If you're getting audio from the wrong one, you can do you can do testing here to make sure which one it is. Um, and then if you uh, click over to where it, uh, it says video it will bring up for cameras as well. So if you have a laptop, but you want to use your Logitech webcam, you can just change the camera here. Uh, and then also in this pane is pretty important um, is your video quality. So we're recommending that you always use standard definition um, video for this. The reason is um, we do have students who maybe have slow internet or they're on a cell phone um, and it's going to uh, keep a lower bandwidth for them. Um, I think if you're on a Wi-Fi connection, Google Meet will usually default to the 360p, or if your camera is lower resolution, it will def default to the standard definition. Um, but if you're on a wired connection with a HD camera, it might offer you the HD version, but make sure every time you go in and start your meeting, you change it back down to standard definition. That way the students um, will have um, a better quality uh, and less bandwidth. Okay, so 360p is the setting or standard definition. Um, you can close that window, and then if you go back to the, the more settings there, there's also this uh, record meeting feature. So um, especially the first couple weeks when classes st get start getting into coming back from spring break, um, it's a really good idea to record your courses. Maybe some students aren't able to attend at the right class time. Maybe they have to worry about... Um, getting their kids into daycare or other different things. So um, we uh, re uh, recommend that you record your class. So if you click on that, um, it will bring up this window here that asks for consent. So you're supposed to tell the people that are on the meeting with you that you're recording it. Um, you know, if it's for your class, you can maybe just put it in the syllabus or email. Said so click on this link to attend class, but just to let you know it's going to be recorded. Um, and then after you uh, click accept, you're going to see in the upper corner a little recording thing. It turns red when it starts recording. It takes a couple seconds for it to start. And then that should stay on as long as you're recording. Um, if you do have breaks during the class, you, maybe you want us to uh, pause the recording or stop the recording. Um, that way you can take that part out. Um, and um, the recordings will show up in your Google Drive after you're done with the meeting. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Next feature I'm going to go is into is captions. So um, Google Meet has automatic captions, which is one of the advantages of Google Meet over Zoom. Uh, I believe Zoom has a third-party um, plugin that will do that. Um, for captions, there's a, there's two ways to, to find the captions. One is in the more settings bar up here, and the other is in your, your toolbar, toolbar at the very bottom. And when you click on that, 
it's going to um, crop your image a little bit and then put the captions underneath. And it will, um, it'll be kind of like a little bit of a chat window there. It will show who spoke what um, and caption it for you. Um, one thing is the captions do not show up on the recording of your class. But if you upload your video up to YouTube, which is what we're recommending, YouTube also has captions as well. Um, one thing I think that would be a very good idea is plan, if, if you're doing this for uh, th this week, for your, next week for your class, you know, maybe, maybe you're just sending students an email on Monday, but maybe you're having a Google Meet on Wednesday. Expend, expect to spend the first 15 minutes of class helping students troubleshoot a little bit, familiarizing them with the features. You might need to tell them to turn their microphones off when they join. Um, show them where some of the features are as well. Um, and then um, when, you're, when you're done, uh, when you're finished with the course, you can hang up. And the hang up is the, uh, oh wait. Oh, next slide. Next slide is, I'm sorry, I, f I forgot this, is uh, to do screen sharing. So that, all of that was just to prepare you to start your class. Now, now we're actually having the class here, the students are here. You want to share your screen. Okay, so um, down there in the lower corner it says present. Um, and then um, if you want to click on share your entire screen, and then it will bring up a window and you're going to see a picture of, of your own computer screen there. And you want to click on the middle of that. And then it'll highlight that with a blue box. And then you want to click share. Okay. And then it will go to here. And then you can go to whatever programs you want. If you want to open up a web browser for Laulima. If you want to have PowerPoint. So like here's a PowerPoint. If you take your PowerPoint full screen, it will share the full screen. Um, and then if you notice at the bottom here of the screen share, there is a stop sharing. It says stop sharing there. So you click on that to when you're done share, sharing the screen. There we go. Click on that. And that will bring you back out to here. Um, let's see. One more feature that is in the more options is to change layout. So the default layout is you're going to see whoever's speaking very big, and you might see some smaller pictures down the side of whoever else is in there with their camera on. If you're, if you're having maybe a class discussion, there, you can change the layout so it'll have more people big. So you want to see three or four people at one time, you can. Uh, that's, that's one of the extra features that was in down for the more options. Um, and then when you're done with the class, to hang up, you can just... Uh, hang up right there, and um, that will be done with that. So next, I'm, I'm going to show you guys how to use Google Calendar. You can use Google Calendar to schedule your, um, uh, oh yeah, when you end the meeting, you'll get a, a splash screen to um, ask you for your evaluation of the, the quality of it. Um, but now I'm going to uh, change gears here, and we're going to go to Google Calendar. So I'm going to go to okay. Um, oops, no. Google. Calendar. Get my phone here. Get my phone here so I can sign into Duo. Okay. Okay, so here we are with my Google Calendar. And um, I'm going to go to create so I can create my classes for the semester. So if I go to create, it will bring up this little pop-up. But I want the full screen window. So I'm going to click down here for more options. OK. And then so I'm going to give my um, course a name. 
Maybe I'll just go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 101. Make up a course number. Go. Um, this is a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. I'm going to start it on Monday at 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. And then I want to have it repeat so I can set it up for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So um, if you click on, on where it says do not repeat, it brings down this drop down menu and you go to custom. And then you can repeat Monday, Wednesday, Friday every once a week. I can have this go till mid-June. And I can click done. And now it's going to be scheduled for the rest of the semester. And now I want to add conferencing. So right here, add conferencing, and it says Hangouts Meet. So that will generate your, your course meeting number. If you click on this, it will open a window to your Google Meet. But you can also click on this uh, carrot down here, and it will bring you, there's also a phone number. So if you have students that don't have internet, but they have a phone line, they can call in for the audio of the course. Um, so what you want to do is you want to take this, copy and paste it. So you copy it, and then you would want to paste this into an email or your Laulima, and then get that information to your students so they can attend, attend class. Um, there is one more feature here, which is add live stream. So if you had really maybe a really big class, like 80 people or something like that, maybe you don't want all 80 people on your meeting with microphones. You can also have it do what's called a live stream. So if you add a live stream, anyone that comes in on, on the live stream will just be one way broadcast from you to them. They will not be able to, to ask you questions. But maybe if you have a big class, that's what you want. Okay, so it will do the same thing here. It will create a link for that as well. Um, and if, if you decide you don't want the live stream, you can just remove it from here as well. Um, if you want to add your email list for your class in here to add guests, you can. But I would also recommend doing the cut and paste into Laulima or an email because when uh, some people they're, they get the automatic notification from Google Calendar. It just goes into the spam. So um, I, you cover your bases if you do everything like that. So now I'm, I'm done setting this up for the semester. I can come over here and click Save. And then if I go to next week's calendar, there it is, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, through the rest of the semester. Um, now there is another nice thing about Google Meet is even though we've scheduled that meeting to happen on a certain time and place, that meeting is actually open anytime anyone wants to click on the link. So you could also use that same link for office hours. Um, if students wanted to, to maybe just get together and study together, they could click on that same link and they'd be able to do that as well. So it, um, I could just go here to that and it would join the Google Meet. That's the, the class I created. OK, at this point, um, I'm going to show you where to find your recordings when the recordings are done. So if you go back to your Google App Switcher in the corner of your window and you go to Google Drive, you will now see a new folder that's called Meet Recordings. Say. So if I click on that, it will, have, it will generate a generic name with a time and date. And then I would, what I would recommend is that you go and change the name of your recording. So you would name it, name it with, you can leave, maybe leave the date in there. Um, okay. Uh, first lecture. Go. Okay, so I've renamed the recording. And at this point, I'm going to download it from Google Drive. And then that will be the next um, presentation is Chris is going to show you guys how to upload video to YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, 